In our last video, we talked about how homogeneous mixtures could be mixed so well that you can't see the individual pieces. Now it's time to talk about how we can use some physical properties of matter, properties that are characteristics of a substance that we can observe without destroying the physical identity of the substances to separate them into their individual components. Physical properties include things like boiling temperatures, melting temperatures, density, color, hardness, odor, and even solubility and intermolecular forces. Distillation is a technique that we can use to separate homogeneous solutions from each other using a physical property known as boiling point. For example, if we had a mixture of like isopropyl alcohol, which is that stuff that you can buy at CVS or Rite Aid to uh, clean up a cut. Isopropyl alcohol has a boiling temperature of about 82 to 83 degrees Celsius. And it's usually mixed up with water in a solution so that it's not too concentrated. And water's boiling point is usually 100 degrees Celsius, depending on the pressure outside. So if you want to separate these two compounds to have a more concentrated isopropyl alcohol solution, all you would need to do is carefully heat the mixture in a distilling flask to around 82 or 83 degrees Celsius. You don't want it to get too hot because you don't want water vapors to escape as well. But if you heat it just right to 82 degrees or 83 degrees Celsius, the isopropyl alcohol molecules will vaporize and then they'll travel down this thing called a condensing tube where you, you stick uh, one tube of water connected to like a tap and that water will fill up the condensing tube to make sure that that whole area is really cold. And then those vapors of the isopropyl alcohols will turn back into a liquid and fall down the tube into a receiving flask. That leftover stuff is going to be called distillate. It's going to be more pure than our original mixture was. A chemist can repeat this experiment to keep getting a more and more pure sample. This method works for separating any kind of two liquids mixed together that have different boiling points. The next technique we're going to learn about is filtration. This one's actually pretty simple. Have you ever made mac and cheese at home? or any kind of pasta where you boil the pasta and you've got this solid material floating around in super hot water and all you really want is that solid pasta when you're done cooking it. So what you do is you pour your pasta into a strainer of some kind or a colander and it traps your pasta in this really awesome bowl with holes and then all of the water falls down to the bottom. Well, filtration works the same way. If you do a chemical reaction where you end up collecting a solid material in the bottom of a beaker and it's, just, it's in a mixture with a bunch of water, what you can do is you can pour that sample and into a filtration flask. What we do is we put a piece of paper called filter paper and fold it into a cone and put it inside of a funnel and that funnel is placed inside a filtration flask when you when you pour your mixture into this apparatus your interesting molecules will get trapped on the paper and the filtrate that's like the leftover stuff uh, will, will fall to the bottom of the flask we can improve the filtration process by making it faster if we connect a tube to a vacuum line 
if you're lucky enough to have one in your building, uh, where it will suck all the air out of this area, creating a vacuum so that the water falls down or the whatever your solvent is will fall down into the filtration flask faster. We generally need to continue to dry our material, so we'll use a, an oven set to a low heat standard to make sure that all the water evaporates out of our paper and solid sample. Later, after we learn about intermolecular forces, we'll go over even more separation techniques.